You must tee your ball within a club's length of the hole. That's right! This used to be an actual rule in golf. In fact, it's actually one of the earliest known rules of the game, and it was written by the gentleman golfers of Leith in 1744. Now, even though golf is still a game that's deeply rooted in the past, many of the rules have been changed or discarded over the years. Hey guys, welcome back to Golf 365, where we tell you everything you need to know about golf these days. In this video, we're looking back at some of the biggest golf rule changes of the last decade. And trust me, there have been a lot of those. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. First up, we have to talk about the atrocious rule change that's probably going to create a dramatic shift in the sport. That's right, we're talking about the distance that the golf ball can cover. After six whole years of the course being fully dominated by power hitters, the RA and the US Golf Association are finally proposing some big changes. And if this proposal goes through, then it might be the end of an era for big hitters like Bryson DeChambeau. A lot of you might have heard the controversy about how golf courses are getting bigger and bigger over the years, with golf pros now hitting the ball to crazy long lengths the organizers had to adjust by making bigger courses. Unfortunately, those huge courses also take up gallons of water to maintain, and for most of the world, that's a heck load of water wastage. To cater to that controversy, the new proposal focuses on ball specifications. In fact, they're hoping to cap tee shots at about 15 yards. The aim of this new change is to give competitions an option to use balls that are already tested under modified launch conditions. In simple words, this means they're trying to control how far these balls can travel in distance. Even though the equipment makers are still out out in the fence on this decision, the new rule change is set to be implemented from January 2026. And even though the RNA and US Golf Association have big hopes, they haven't exactly received a lot of support from brands like Akushnet, the company who owns Titleist. According to them, this unnecessary change would just divide golf between elite and recreational play. Ultimately, it would add confusion and break the long-running tradition of the game. And of course, the popular live golf player Bryson DeChambeau even called the new proposal absolutely atrocious. Since the guy is basically known for his big hit, we didn't expect any different reaction from him. Do you guys think this new rule change will go through? Let us know in the comments. Next up, let's talk about the groove rule. Back in the day, there was a lot of controversy about how players were using a bomb and gouge strategy. They weren't being penalized for having to hit the approach shots from the rough, which meant they kept playing some spin shots. At that point, the USGA intervened and tried to cut down on the amount of spin any player can generate. And how did they do that? Of course, by changing the criteria for grooves. They softened the edges, and the shape was changed entirely entirely to remove the U-groove or the square groove. This big rule change was made just before the 2010 PGA Tour season, and then we even saw it make its way into amateur golf in 2016. And before that, there was also something known as the wind rule. If you're an old golf fan, then you might remember this one, but for the newer golf community members, you wouldn't believe what the wind rule was. Imagine playing in a professional tournament and taking the best stroke ever. You're cheering on the inside when suddenly a powerful breeze makes the ball move after you've addressed it. And just like that, you get the penalty just because of the wind. Sounds absurd, right? Well, you might not believe it, but that rule actually remained on the books until 2012. This rule stated that if wind or any other element beyond your control made the ball move on the green after you have taken the shot, you'd be penalized for it. But thankfully, when enough high-profile players lost some big championships because of the stupid rule, the USGA was forced to act. We can never forget when Webb Simpson took a penalty for his ball moving before a tap-in. In fact, that penalty might have cost him the 2011 and Zurich Classic. Now that the rule no longer exists, players don't have to worry about the wind when they're playing. The new version says that if a player addresses the ball and the wind or gravity makes it move afterward, the player continues to play from the new spot no penalties involved. And hey, did you know about the anchoring rule? Golfers anchoring long putters to their bodies is nothing we haven't seen before, but the fact that this strategy helped golfers succeed at high levels is only something that started happening recently. Back at the 2011 PGA Championship, Keegan Bradley became the first player to win a major like that. After that, Webb Simpson did it at the 2012 US Open, Ernie Els at the 2012 British Open, and then Adam Scott at the 2013 Masters. And that's when the USGA had to take a closer look. Now there's a new anchor rule that doesn't exactly outlaw long putters, but players aren't allowed to anchor them to their body during the stroke. When they made this big golf rule change, the USGA's executive director, Mike Davis, said that this rule comes from the fact that for 600 years, golf has been all about picking up the club, gripping it with two hands, and making a free swing away from the body. That sounds pretty reasonable to us. Now let's move on to the next big rule change. Up until pretty recently, we also had something called the TV rule. Until the 2018 season, people watching the sport from home 
could actually affect the outcome of a tournament. So how exactly did that work? Well, before the governing bodies announced that they were letting go of this rule for good, TV viewers could call in and report possible rule breaks during the tournament. So if you were casually watching the Masters and noticed a player break the rules, you could just call the governing bodies and report it, and your call would actually make a difference. Even though people were already talking about discarding this absurd TV rule for a long time, it actually happened because of Lexi Thompson's situation at the 2017 ANA Inspirational. She was easily leading in the final round before she was given a four-shot penalty after someone emailed to report that she'd wrongfully marked her ball on the 17th green during the third round. That led to Lexi losing in a playoff to So Yon Ru, but thankfully it made the governing bodies rethink their rules. Now, just like all other sports, video replay is used to review any possible rule violations. They also appointed designated rule officials who sit and monitor any issues that arise during the tournament. And on that note, back in 2013, we even had a Tiger Woods rule. No, it isn't exactly called the Tiger Woods rule, but he's definitely the one responsible for this huge change. He got a two-shot penalty in the second round at the BMW Championship when some video footage showed that he moved the ball and didn't return it to the original position while he was clearing brush around it. The tour officials were told about the footage during the round, and even though the pro golfer kept insisting that he wasn't at fault, he still got the penalty. When the whole situation sent the golf world into a frenzy, the USGA and the RNA announced that they would change the rule now. The new rule says that if a ball's move it can't be seen with the naked eye at the time, then the player would not be penalized for it. This rule change came into effect for the 2014 season, but if it came just one year earlier, then it would have prevented the penalty drama for Woods. I guess good things come with time, right? And before we wrap up, did you know that before this year, you could easily replace your club even if you damaged it yourself? This latest rule change is making life easier for golfers everywhere. And if we're being honest, then rule number 4.1 has seen a lot of changes over the past decade. Before 2019, if a golf club was damaged during normal play, then players could choose to continue, repair, or replace it. But if it was damaged outside normal play, then it couldn't be used at all. Then in 2019, players were told that they were allowed to continue using a club that was damaged in any way, whether it was during the normal course of play or during an anger outburst. But there was a catch. They couldn't replace the club, no matter how badly it was damaged. Now, in 2023, there's another change. According to the new modification, players are allowed to keep using or repair any clubs that are damaged during the round. It doesn't matter what the damage is, it could even be that you slam down your club in anger. Still, players aren't allowed to replace a damaged club anytime they want. They can only replace it if it's damaged by an outside influence, natural forces, or by someone apart from the golfer and their caddy. If you ask us, then we think this new rule change makes golf pretty forgiving for the players. Best of all, it helps to avoid any disqualification penalties if they hit the club up against something and then continue to use it without even realizing that the shaft was bent. Now, instead of being disqualified, they can just repair it. Gone are the days when golf used to be a super strict sport, right? And that's a wrap for this video. Did you know about these huge golf rule changes? Changes? What other absurd rules do you remember? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more awesome content like this. And hey, do you know which pro golfer might be quitting the game forever? Watch the full video now to find out.